Hello loves, happy Saturday. Welcome to another video. I'm so happy to have you here. If this is your first time, welcome. My name is Jenna and I have an online crystal shop called Pretty Crystals where I sell crystals for healing, happiness, harmony, and home decor. You can shop all of the pretty pieces at www.prettycrystals.shop. Follow me on Instagram, just at Pretty Crystals. That's where I post most of my stuff. And next month, in just a few days, we are starting a pretty Patreon, which is very, very exciting. So for just $5 a month, you will be a part of a close-knit community of angels and get an exclusive video every single week. I'll leave all the links below and all that good stuff. As always, get comfy, get cozy, grab a snack or a drink, whatever makes you feel good. I just have some ice water today. Feels good to hydrate. And I will go ahead and pull a card for us. These were the ones from last week. Just a little message that we can set our intention on, a little angel message for ya. Okay. This is really sweet. I don't know if everyone will resonate with this. Not all of us have our mothers here, but this one is mother healing. And it says, as your feelings towards your mother heal, your desires manifest more rapidly and accurately. And that is really, really precious. My mom and I have a very close relationship, but we have struggled in the past. I'm actually going to see her for the first time in a while this weekend, so that'll be really nice. I'm going to pull another card because, like I said, I know that's not going to resonate with everybody. Okay, and this one says, explore your options. It's time to look at other possibilities. It's a good time to make changes. I am feeling that energy strongly. I am making a lot of big changes in my life. So um, if you're feeling like you need a little push in a new direction, take that as a sign to go for it. We've only got one life and we got to live it to our fullest potential, right? So those are our little messages. So today I am going to be doing a crystal business Q&A. It's been a while since I've done one of these. I did one a couple years back, maybe a year and a half ago on my old channel. I will link that below for you if you are interested. But since then, a lot has changed, not only in my life, but the economy, social media has changed a lot. I honestly cannot believe how quickly social media shifts especially these days it's pretty intense um so yeah things are different and it's a brand new year and I feel like I've learned a lot and I wanted to do a Q&A so I asked on Instagram to give me your questions as many as you wanted ask anything nothing's off the table and I have quite a few to go through so if you are brand new and this is your first video with me, I started Pretty Crystals at the end of 2019. I had been into crystals for quite some time and the idea of Pretty Crystals uh, really came to me in what I consider to be a very divine way. It just really unfolded and crazy enough at that time, not to say there was no crystal community, but I didn't know any other online crystal shops that were similar to me so looking back and seeing like all the other girls that are like kind of have a similar vibe and aesthetic and crystal shop it's just interesting to think about how there's like a collective of us that didn't even get inspiration from each other we were just kind of like you know getting our divine downloads and following our heart so it's really really cool but yeah at that time I didn't know any other online crystal shops I wasn't following any on Instagram I didn't know there was a huge crystal community I didn't know where this business could take me I just really really was following my intuition and my heart it has ended up being amazing I love what I do I love pretty crystals I'm so grateful that I followed my heart and I'm so grateful for everyone that I've met along the way. In my first full year, I generated six figures in sales. I got to travel to a lot of amazing places, do some incredible crystal shopping, meet a lot of people, and I've learned a lot of things. So yeah, 
In today's video, I'm going to be answering your questions. I wrote them all down here and so let's just dive right into it. I'm sorry that I always like fluff my hair. I just don't like when it gets flat. So I go like this. One time this woman left this like really rude comment and you just move your hair so we can see your cleavage. And I was like, first of all, no. Second of all, if cleavage offends you, like maybe this is not the right channel for you. I just, I don't know, but maybe it is distracting. So I'll try to stop fluffing my hair throughout the video. <laughs> Okay, so our first question is how much of a financial investment does one need to start up? I'm going to go as far as to say that you can start your brand with zero dollars because it does cost zero dollars to set up an Instagram to pick a name that aligns with you and kind of start building your brand. I'm very into brand building. I think that is the most important part of an online business and establishing yourself online as opposed to the sales because once you create the really solid stable foundation of your brand sales are going to come so much easier as opposed to first trying to generate a lot of sales when you don't have a brand backing you up and people aren't connecting with you you're going to just have a harder time so my answer is zero dollars start with an instagram start with a name that feels amazing to you and then as far as investing in your inventory you can really start with as little as $50, $100, and that is actually what I recommend is to start slow if you are starting out in this industry because you're going to learn so much as you go. You're going to learn things that feel right, things that don't feel right, what kind of customers are you attracting, what kind of profit margins you're able to have with different pieces at different price points. So yeah, you can start with 50 dollars buy a few pieces buy one piece and try to sell it and see how that goes in the beginning i would go to wholesalers and spend like 200 dollars at that time it felt like a lot which is kind of crazy now it's more like you know two thousand dollars and beyond when i do a wholesale trip but yeah you really don't need a lot to invest baby steps is like my biggest piece of advice for building your brand Okay, the next question is, how much of a markup percentage-wise do you need to make a profit considering expenses? Okay, this is definitely something that's going to be important to figure out uh, when you are starting or if you're already established as Crystal Shop. And there is kind of an industry standard as far as the markup. Every seller is obviously going to be quite different and mine has certainly changed and evolved a lot over the years of being in business. The specific numbers uh, is something that I will save for the Patreon group for Crystal Shop owners and the course that I already have, which is called Pretty Successful. But I will say this, everyone's financial situation is so different. Everyone's tax situation is so different depending on the state you live in, the country you live in, and it's really hard to kind of give a general answer but my biggest piece of advice that pertains to this is find a good cpa near you and go over all of your financial goals your financial situation in my opinion you are going to need a cpa and even a separate bookkeeper if they don't do that for you i just uh started using quickbooks and hired a separate bookkeeper to my accountant and that has been a game changer so yeah everyone's situation is going to vary considerably but find yourself a good cpa someone that has been recommended or comes with good reviews and go from there all right our next question is what do you do with discounted or unsold inventory and this is definitely a frustrating factor of owning a crystal shop because inevitably you are going to have unsold pieces and it gets a little scary sometimes what i typically do is continue to promote the pieces until they sell back in the beginning of pretty crystals if i had old unsold inventory I would feel a little bit frazzled and like I needed to sell it right away and I would discount 
pretty quickly to kind of get that turnover so I could go shopping again and get more pieces. I have a little bit of a different approach now in kind of my second run with Pretty Crystals and I actually, especially because I sell bigger pieces, I prefer to sit on them versus discounting them and getting them out um, because I have found that in the end I end up making a greater profit. I just find that in the long run I'm not like cutting my losses as much, um, I'm not burning myself out as much, and it just feels better that way. So what I do is I don't panic about the unsold inventory and I find creative ways to re-promote it. I guess my piece of advice here would be don't just continue posting the same video of the crystal that isn't selling because you know if it's not selling the first few times that you're promoting it, you're probably gonna need to like freshen up the content Try taking some different footage, make it look different, make it exciting. And if it's really not selling and if it's not too much of a loss for your business, you can use it in a giveaway, which is a really good way to garner new followers, attract attention, and give back to uh, the people who support you. So that would be kind of what I do for unsold inventory. Next question is, do you deal with non payers and the answer is rarely and I feel very lucky to say that I do hear chatter in the seller community about a lot of non-payers who kind of give the sellers a hard time waste their time things like that and I believe that this kind of comes down to attracting your uh, dream clientele and really making your brand align with your dream customers. It can be easy to fall, you know, victim to kind of pleasing everybody, especially when you're starting out. You just like are so grateful for a sale, so excited for anyone who's going to support your business. But there are a lot of people out there who are kind of like, you know, energy vampires, I would say, and you just have to be careful of that. If you're just starting out and if someone's wasting your time and, you know, giving you the runarounds on payments or just consistently being a non-payer, uh, just, you know, respectfully say, I don't want to serve you anymore, and you can block them. It's as simple as that. Uh, that would have been a much harder concept for me in the beginning because I'm a people pleaser, and, you know, you're kind of coming from this place of, like, having to serve everybody, but have more respect for yourself in that because you're offering a beautiful service to these people, and if they're not respecting your time or your energy or your crystals, then, um, you know, you don't have time for them. I also understand that if you're selling like greater quantities of crystals, especially smaller crystals and kind of like pumping out the inventory quickly, you're going to have more customers and you're going to attract more customers. So that could be partly the reason that I don't run into this as much. I do have a friend, he is another seller and he sells a lot of crystals and he has a really great business, he's really smart and whenever I go onto his live sales, he's always has like a whole section of these like blacklisted customers who haven't paid. And I always feel for him because he puts in so much work um, into his business, obviously, and he does always have a handful of people. So you can do what he does and like shout them out and like put them on blast. I don't think I would do that, but I've had a lot of other sellers reach out to me and say, hey, this person is a non-payer, just beware. Um, which is nice, but yeah, it doesn't happen to me often and I think um, Know who you're selling to and Have a clause on your website or your Instagram page somewhere if this is a problem for you and discuss your rules regarding Payment I see a lot of other sellers do that. I probably should do that. I just have never needed to I I haven't felt the need to, knock on wood, <laughs> but have those rules listed clearly so people know not to mess with you. Okay, next question is, since you made six figures, were you struggling to keep up with the demand? And sorry, I'm doing this with my hair again. Sit on my hands. <laughs> So like I mentioned in the very beginning, I did make six figure or generate six figures in sales, not profit. So I will be clear about that. And I was very burnt out that year. 
was I struggling up with demand? No, I wouldn't say I was struggling up with struggling with demand because I was creating the demand, if that makes sense. So I was constantly shopping, selling, promoting. Had I stopped, like I could have taken a week off and nobody would have been like hounding me for more crystals. Do you know what I mean? So I wouldn't say there was a demand. I was just in work mode and hustling and you know demanding too much out of myself is what it comes down to so that was a beautiful year for me i'm really proud of myself but it was also really really hard and i burnt out really really bad and this is when i decided to go travel for a year in europe and kind of take a break figure out what i wanted i will also reiterate baby steps in the beginning you don't have to generate six figures in sales your first year and honestly usually that takes a bigger toll than it's worth there are a lot of tiktoks going around that i've seen recently and i'll try to find this one that will always stick in my head but this girl who you know built her brand to like a million dollar brand or something um you know pretty big and she just started crying and saying that like she's a shell of who she was formerly because you know, she just dedicated her whole life to her business. You know, everything happens for a reason, but just be cautious of that if you're starting or if you're, you know, working really, really hard. Remember, self-care comes first. Self-care is so important and you will get there. You'll get there more sustainably if you take small steps. So I hope that answered that question okay. The next question is, did you achieve work-life balance? I think anyone that works for themselves will tell you that this is an everyday struggle. It's an everyday process. I'm always kind of trying to figure this one out. So have I achieved it? I'm more balanced with my work-life than I ever have been before, I think, and I'm really grateful for that. I'm really happy right now right now excuse me and something that helped me a lot that was a big lesson for me is to make sure to generate other streams of income i think something i was doing in the beginning of pretty crystals was diving in a hundred thousand percent and i was putting a lot of pressure on myself and when i was traveling i really made an effort to figure out what my other streams of income were so I could take a little bit of this crazy pressure off of myself to grow pretty crystals and now that I've done that and I'm still doing it and I'm back home I'm actually living with a friend of mine so I can save money and hopefully purchase my home maybe early next year or even sooner and I feel a lot freer and I'm having a lot more fun creatively with my work so I would say the best way that I found to achieve work-life balance is to take financial burdens off your plate that don't necessarily need to be there, even if it's something small. I think for me that was big. So create those streams of income and take off any financial burdens that aren't necessary and that's going to bring you to more of a place of work-life balance. I also will say that there are seasons for everything. If you want to be in a hustle season for a year and just go for it, like, if it's not going to kill you or hurt anybody else, then why not, you know? So take that as you will, I guess. Next question is, what do you do with inventory that isn't selling besides mark it down? So kind of similar question to before. And like I said, find new exciting ways to promote it. Do some new content. Wait a little bit. Sit on it. Don't freak out because if you... Feel like you need to sell this piece right away people are going to know that and they're going to be like well if no one else wanted this piece why do i want this piece oh it's 11 11 just turn to 11 12. so find unique ways to promote it sit on the inventory for a little bit give people some time to you know maybe forget about it a little and learn from it too of course uh maybe there's a reason this piece isn't selling and maybe moving forward you're not going to try to sell a similar piece. Or maybe, going back to the dream clientele thing, um, if this piece is so true to you and you're what you envision for your brand, maybe you need to work on some different marketing uh, techniques or tactics uh, to attract a different 
clientele. Oh, another good tip too, if you're promoting it on Instagram, make all of your hashtags like, let's say you're trying to sell this uh, Rose Quartz Tower and it's not selling. Take some new amazing footage with it, use a trending, you know, song on Reels or TikTok and hashtag everything specific about this piece. Don't hashtag crystal business or crystal shop. Okay, I'm so sorry about the hair. Now I'm actually annoying myself with it. I'm gonna stop. Hashtag Rose Quartz, hashtag Rose Quartz Tower, hashtag Beautiful Rose Quartz Tower, hashtag Amazing Rose Quartz Tower, hashtag Rose, Rose Quartz Tower with rainbows. <laughs> trying to say Rose Quartz Tower five times fast. Rose Quartz Tower, Rose Quartz Tower, Rose Quartz Tower, Rose Quartz Tower, Rose Quartz Tower. Ooh. This bowl, by the way, is my last Rose Quartz ashtray, and I have a customer who is interested, so I'm going to send her some pictures today. If it doesn't sell to her, I will put it on the website, and she will be available. She's so gorgeous. I love her. Next question is, how do you find a good vendor? And this is such a fun question. I think finding your wholesalers is such a fun process. I don't recommend asking other crystal sellers who their wholesalers are. More than likely, they're not going to appreciate that. And I don't know, it's kind of like an unknown thing like just put in the legwork on your own to find your wholesalers and honestly that way you're going to find the ones that align with you the most. It is a process to establish those relationships. It is a process to find good ones. I feel very blessed that I'm out here in California because in my experience, in my opinion, that's where a lot of the best wholesalers are. There is a list, a very long list of wholesalers in the course, both on Instagram, in person, in a few different states. And I also have a whole section dedicated to wholesalers and even give you a template that you can use to reach out to them. So that's all in the Pretty Successful course, which I will link below. But other than that, uh, yeah, start with Google, do your research. They are out there and the right ones are going to find you if you put your little feelers out there. Oh, go to gem shows too. More than likely there are gem shows near you and they're so much fun and you can meet a lot of cool people there. Next question is, what types of crystals would you recommend starting off with, cheaper or expansive? Now, this goes back to your brand. I think it's going to be very important to establish yourself when you start as the brand you want to be. So think about what kind of uh, pieces you want to sell. Do you want to sell more expensive crystals or do you want to sell the less expensive crystals and cater to that market? There's money to be made in both areas, of course. Uh, you can even do a blend of the two if it works for you. But like I said from one of the other questions, don't just go out and spend $3,000 or $2,000 or even $1,000 on inventory to start because there are a lot of things to be learned in the process. So start with either a small batch of crystals or maybe even one big piece and try to flip it. So uh, yeah, it really depends on your brand. I would say just start on the smaller scale with your investment. Next question is how did you get started? And I touched on this a little in the beginning, but really I was just following my intuition, my heart. I had no blueprint. The only shop that I knew of that I was really inspired by was, and I can't even remember, I think her name is Heather. She's an older woman and she has a crystal shop, like a really big one. I'll try to find it and put it here. That was like the only shop I knew of. So I was just going based off my gut. I had a friend who owned a local salon in Sacramento and she was doing a little event and she let me come set up a table with my crystals. So that was really where it all started. November 1st, 2019 was when I did that. And right beforehand, I went on a trip down to LA. My very first wholesale trip, I have those vlogs. Uh, on my old channel, which I can link them below. I'm really glad I vlogged them because it's just so cute and special for me to look back 
just knowing like how little I knew back then and that I was just like going for it and I was so scared. Yeah, to see those is really, really precious, but I just went for it. I booked an Airbnb in LA and I found some wholesalers there and I went shopping. I brought back a lot of inventory and I set up my table at my friend's little event. And from then on, I just started building my Instagram page. I was like so scared to do my first post. I didn't want to mess it up. I didn't, you know, want to be rejected. I, I didn't know what I was doing. I wanted it all to be right. And it took me a while to post my first post on Instagram, but I'm so glad I did. I went out and did photo shoots with the crystals. I went to, you know, down to the Bay Area with a bunch of my pieces and had a friend help me take photos on the beach of all my crystals. And I just, you know, did everything I could to start growing. And I recommend, this is cheesy, but just like listen to your heart. Like if you're gonna build an authentic, sustainable, lucrative, beautiful business, a lot of the answers are gonna come from within. You know, there are people like me who can help you along the way. There are a lot of other crystal sellers that um, sell uh, resources and sell their uh, experience. I'll shout out Cold Brew Barbie. Uh, she's another seller that sells a lot of her tips and I think she does have a Patreon group as well for sellers. So, you know, people are out there to hold your hand, but just know that when I started, I didn't know a single other crystal seller and I honestly wouldn't have it any other way because I was really able to tune in to my own truth and my own heart. And like I said, I think there's like this cool collective of us that are all the same and I la like sometimes people leave rude comments and they're like oh not another crystal girl with her fake nails and fake hair and all this stuff and I just laugh because it's like I've been doing my nails and my hair forever and I didn't have another crystal girl to look look to when I started so it really this is me and my brand speaks so deeply to my soul and it's important to not forget about that aspect of building a business. Next question is how did you build a clientele? And again, this kind of ties into everything I've been talking about throughout this video, but just making sure your brand is true to you and that you're putting out content to attract your dream customer and they will come. I have a handful of amazing friends that I've met through Pretty Crystals. And again, I will, you know, be so clear. In the beginning, I didn't know anyone like me. I didn't know that this was a whole community, that there were thousands of other girls just like me out there, but they found me and I found them. And, you know, one of my favorite quotes is, if you build it, they will come. So just start building your brand and your clientele will come. Another thing, like, not that I think any of you do this, but like, don't go steal, quote unquote, customers from other sellers. I have had people, and I'm sure it happens to so many people, and I, I get it, it's a way to grow. And if I'm being completely transparent, way back in the day, I used to do follow unfollow uh, to grow my personal Instagram when I was doing like booty building and all of my vegan stuff. And I was a little bit naive, I think, back then. Now I just feel like it's kind of a, I don't know if icky is the right word. It's not like, a, it's just not how I recommend building your customer base. I've had people follow me and then go in and follow all of my customers and I don't really appreciate that. And again, I know it's very common. If you've done it, no judgment. Like I said, I used to do un follow and follow on my old personal Instagram, but it's not how I recommend building your clientele. I recommend getting really clear on your brand, your intention, your aesthetic, and they will come. If you build it, they will come. And our last question is knowing what's current and wait, what was it? I thought I had it. <laughs> knowing how to stay current and what's most in demand. I love this question because I've been having so much fun with this lately. And I would say make sure when you are scrolling social media, and I know we all scroll social media, social media is getting 
a lot more addictive these days. It's all videos, it's all quick, um, you know, short form content. And I would say be aware when you're scrolling, use that time for market research. Right now, social media is like all about trends and it's so easy to blow up on social media. I feel like I need to do a whole video about like reels and YouTube shorts because I've been experimenting experimenting with some things and I feel like I've had a lot of luck and what I'm trying to say is when you're scrolling like always be looking at how do I say this because I was thinking about this the other day really like intensely be very aware when you're scrolling what jumps out to you what speaks to you what do you like if you see a reel and it hooks you save that audio so that you can use it for your content in the future uh, pay attention to what inspires you pay attention to what is you know performing well on Instagram or TikTok or YouTube when I'm scrolling I mostly do reels now uh, is where I scroll but if I'm scrolling and something you know hooks me and makes me feel something I recognize that and I think about it and I think like why did this make me feel this way and uh, a lot of times I'll save the audio and create content out of it myself so if you find a really nice balance between that and you know taking inspiration from other creators and what's doing well on social media versus staying authentic to what you love and what makes you feel good if you can find that balance you are golden baby all right, loves, that does it for today's video. Those are the crystal business questions. Thank you so much if you sent something in. If you have any more questions for me, feel free to leave them in the comments. If you have anything else to say, also leave that in the comments. I would love to hear from you. Like I mentioned, um, we are starting our pretty Patreon February 1st, and I want to tell you a little bit more about it. So there's going to be two tiers. The first tier is for um, anyone who just wants a little bit more than the YouTube channel has to offer. I'm going to be switching to one video per week on YouTube every Saturday and then every Wednesday um, or maybe we'll figure out another date that's better for everyone else. I'm going to be doing an exclusive video on Patreon for all the crystal goddesses. Uh, it'll be a nice little close-knit community there. You also will get 10% off your website order once per month. And then we have our pretty successful tier, which is $44 a month. This is for other crystal sellers. If you are in the beginning of your crystal seller journey, I just ask that you have your crystal shop name established and that you have some sort of Instagram established so that you know, you're really, you're really a crystal seller, uh, but there's going to be lots of good stuff in there. I'll show you uh, some stuff below. And if you have time, take a look. I'll link everything you need below. Please sign up for the monthly newsletter. February is right around the corner. So that will go out February 1st. You can sign up on the website, prettycrystals.shop. And I send out one newsletter every month. Follow me on Instagram at Pretty Crystals. You can always reach out to me if you have any questions. I'm very active in the DMs and would love to connect with you. I also think we're doing an exciting live sale on February 4th. So stay tuned for more announcements about that. I haven't, you know, nailed down the details, but I think it's happening and those are always so fun. So my battery's dying. I'm gonna cheers you. Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate you. I wish you all the luck on your journey, whether you're on your healing journey, your self-love journey, whatever it is, we're in it together. Cheers to you wherever you are on this life journey. I love you and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.